currency. So the government would uh, sell. Uh, sorry. You're exactly correct, except that you skipped the, you know, the story that I wanted to tell. Okay. <laughs> but that is correct. Let's write it down. Somewhere along the line, you expect fixed exchange rate, a tendency for appreciation. There was a tendency for appreciation because of a capital inflow. But there's a piece missing here. Why was there a capital inflow? R is Exactly. R is greater than what is required to balance you in externally. This is what the R required to balance you externally for the small country, the R star, the fixed interest rate. For the large country, it's not a fixed interest rate anymore. The interest rate that you need to balance yourself externally is now this. The output is that. That is the interest rate that you need to balance yourself internally at that specific point. I mean externally. Okay, this is external balance, this is internal balance. So how do you tell the story? R uh, greater than what? Which which R is greater than the interest rate which you need to achieve external balance. R is greater than R that you need to achieve external balance. Does this make sense? So for small open cap trade, you look at the world interest rate. For a large open country, we look at the uh, BP, right? Exactly. We look at the BP curve that stays <coughs> for that large open country. And large open countries have relative largeness. So that the BP curves, you don't know how they actually slope up or down. It depends on the largeness of that open country. Some countries are larger than others. Some countries are more open than others. Okay. Uh, tendency for appreciation. Okay, what's the next step now? The government has to increase the uh, supply of, of uh, domestic uh, currency. Why? Oh, I mean, to change, the, uh, uh, to change M for, uh, for local currency, so they have to in order to do that, they buy a lot of foreign currency yes. and push the price down, the price of their current. Why do they need to do that? Because it's a fixed exchange. Because it's a fixed exchange. Exactly. They have to compensate for this tendency for appreciation. And because there is a tendency for appreciation, no one wants the foreign currency. Everyone wants your home currency. What you do is you jump into the market and buy the foreign currency and pay for it with home currency. So. You're correct. An increase in M. An increase in M will therefore shift the real M curve. And just pretend that's an exact intersection. LM shifts out. Number seven. R is in internal and external. Okay, again, because of this tendency for appreciation, and you have a fixed exchange rate regime, you step in and unload foreign currency into the markets so that you fight the tendency for appreciation. If you fight that, if you increase M, your LM shifts out. If your LM shifts out, your R achieves simultaneous internal, which is the IS and LM intersection, and external, which is the BP intersection, balance. So at that point, point C, simultaneous balance in the internal and external sectors. External balance is when the BP line hits the internal balance. If you are on the BP line, then you have external balance. If you have an ISLM intersection, then that is internal balance. Mm -hmm. okay. Questions?
questions? Okay, we don't have much time, so spin for the next one. So the particularity here, it says, does not go back to R star. Yes, that's true. So that was, okay, important comment. Whereas here, every time we do something to the economy, we end up at R star. Here, we need not end up at R star. 4.2 is monetary expansion, fixed exchange rate. Okay, maybe I can save some time by just uh, telling the story as we go along. I will not write it down anymore. Monetary expansion, fixed exchange rate. What happens here? Well, monetary expansion, you increase the M and therefore you shift the LM curve outward. If this is your original point, point A, where's the point now? The relevant point. Okay, that is IS, right? Always, always, the point of reference, that point of reference is defined by your internal balance because that is where you choose to be. Right? If where you choose to be is not consistent with the external balance, then you're in big trouble. Okay, something has to happen, something has to give. So look at your internal balance first. Look at your internal balance first. That is your internal balance. Relative to the external balance, what needs to happen? That is the way the story must go. Okay, you can toy around with your domestic economy, but you cannot toy around with the world market. You can think of it that way. So that is B, that's A. What needs to happen now? You observe that at B, the interest rate is what? Hello. Too low. The required interest rate at this output level is this, to be at external balance. Your interest rate is too low. If your interest rate is too low, what happens next? Capital outflow. Capital outflow. If you have a capital outflow, there is, in this fixed exchange rate regime, a tendency for what? A depreciation. A depreciation, a weakening of the currency. No one wants your currency because no one wants to invest in your economy. Everyone wants to go to the outside. The outside, which has a bigger interest rate level than what you currently have. Okay, and so there is a tendency for depreciation. In order for you to fight that tendency for depreciation, what do you need to do? You have to buy your own currency and sell foreign currency. If you buy your own currency and sell foreign currency, you go back to point A. <coughs> In other words, monetary expansion in a fixed exchange rate regime, just as what we have there in a small open economy, is not effective. It's useless. Okay? Next step, 4.3 of the fiscal expansion. With a flexible exchange rate regime. Fiscal expansion with a flexible exchange rate regime, you increase government expenditures or decrease taxes, and so your IS shifts up. Now, this is your original point. Where is your point B, the point of reference? <coughs> Internal balance, and therefore it must be where? The LM bias. Exactly, this guy. There's B, right? If B is there, what's happening to this economy? How is it relative to the world? Exchange rate is higher. Not the exchange rate. Yeah, yeah, interest rate. Exactly. Interest rate is high, right? Exchange rate is implicit in this analysis. Interest rate, you probably read the book, didn't you? I do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you read the book, you will always think I did, exchange I did, rate. I did attend the first, the last class on my own. Oh, yeah, well, that's a problem. I mean, look at the handout, it's more helpful. Not that the book is wrong, just that it gets pretty complicated. 
Okay, the B is higher than what is required. The interest rate is too high. Therefore, there's a capital inflow. There's a capital inflow in a flexible exchange rate regime. There is no tendency anymore. What you have is an immediate appreciation. Right? Capital inflow. People want to buy your bonds and securities. In order to buy your bonds and securities, they need to unload their foreign currency and buy your home currency. People cannot invest dollars in Mexico. Or they could they could have they could have done that actually one one particular point in time, but normally you cannot do that. But you have to buy the home currency. And so there is an immediate appreciation. With an appre appreciation of the currency, what happens next? Exports go down. Therefore, net exports go down. Exactly. So if you went up that way, then you must go down the same way. Well, what do you know? If you look up there at the small open economy, the same thing. Right? No difference. Finally, monetary expansion, flexible exchange rate. Final step, a monetary expansion is an increase in M. An increase in M shifts your LM curve upward. Can you just go slower this one because you did it in the last minute. Oh, okay. Right here. No problem. Let me tell the story for you. When M increases, LM shifts out. If LM shifts out, you have an original point here at A. Where is now your point of reference? Point of reference always internal balance. LM prime and IS. Right? If you're there, where are you here? There's a tendency for depth. Right? So something is wrong. Something has to give. At B, there is a tendency for a deficit must compensate for that tendency. That tendency for deficit is caused by what? At B, R is too low. The interest rate is too low. For that given output level, that should have been the interest rate. But you have an interest rate that is too low. If your interest rate is too low, at B, R is too low. Tendency, well, actually, yeah, let's forget tendency because you are there at B. But you won't stay long at B, which is why I was thinking tendency. But yeah, let's say deficit. Actually, depreciation. Actually, no. It's um, R is too low, capital outflow. Capital outflow is equivalent to saying there is a capital account going into deficit. No tendency here. It is going into deficit. Uh, but it will not go into deficit long because you know that this is a flexible exchange rate. What happens next? Capital outflow. Immediate depreciation. So while you are going down, there is already a depreciation occurring. If you want to complicate matters even more, this R going down is more responsive. It's, it happens quickly, but the depreciation's effect on net exports happens slowly. Okay, so you see it's not as, as clear as that ABC movement it will take time. A depreciation increases net exports. And improves the current account. What happens next, therefore? Aya shifts out. Aya shifts out until you enter. 
where your interest rate that is required is exactly equal to the interest rate that obtains. Exactly. That's where you go. How do you know that you get all the way to point C? Exactly, because you need to be there. The depreciation will not stop until you are at the balance of payments equals zero line. But you see, going back to Sir Joe's question again, if it were that easy, going back to balance of payments equals zero, the country should have no problem from A to B to C. Unfortunately, lots of things occur at this range. Presidents get deposed and finance ministers get fired at that range. Once you devalue, you pretty much sign off your political career. <laughs> and so the next finance minister enjoys the increase in net exports, and so does the next president. And so they arrive there. At the original interest rate, which just so happens to be the world. The new world. Oh, not the new world interest rate. Above the original R star. Yes. So for the PP curve, it is always situated between um, MM curve and the world interest rate. Exactly. The final point I want to make today. <coughs> is how you draw this BP curve. If you drew a BP curve, and can I erase this now? Or point two, actually. Actually, let's not erase it. I, S, L, M. We've been drawing the BP curve as slightly flatter than the LM, right? Well, what if we drew it as steeper than the LM? What happens then? You will have different effects there. Okay? We, we need not go into this, but I want you to know that if you draw it the wrong way, then you might be experiencing different effects in terms of the flexible and the fixed exchange rates. And the flatness or the steepness of the BP curve depends on what? Exactly, the capital mobility. The more immobile capital is, the steeper the BP curve is. The more mobile you are, the flatter the BP curve is. So implicitly, we've been applying large open economy, but relatively mobile capital. Relatively, because it's relatively flat. Not perfectly flat, but, you know, more or less flat. The more mobile the capital, the flatter the BP curve. The more immobile the capital, the steeper the BP curve. Case 3. Case 3, yeah, this is the perfect immobility case. There is no such thing as a perfectly mobile and a perfectly immobile. Yep. There will always be a restriction. There will always be a paper that you need to sign in order to move your currency around. That's a restriction. That slows down mobility. Okay? And so don't make the mistake of drawing your BP curve to the left of the LM curve. If you do, then you will not get this. Okay. You can still reach equilibrium and you can play around with it yourself. But it will not be in the same manner that we have there. And finally, Mao's question is this. 4.1. Okay, you end up at an interest rate that is higher than the world interest rate, and that implicitly you have a current account surplus. The problem with this is that if you keep on doing this, fiscal expansion and fixed exchange rate, how long can you keep the fixed exchange rate? Fixed. As long as they have reserves. And therefore, if this fiscal expansion has something to do with increasing output, increasing their capability to export, 
then you will have bigger and bigger reserves, and then they will probably be able to extend their ability to maintain the balance of payments surplus. Okay, any further questions? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.